Welcome to Monday's edition of Renew Plus. I'm Pastor Tony. Thank you for joining us for another week. Week number six of an access road we've simply entitled Grace. This is an access road off of a series we did earlier entitled Highway 316, where we looked in depth at the unconditional love of God for us. And of course, that's the beginning of everything right there. Our salvation, our life, creation, everything came because of God's unconditional love and His grace towards us. Now, again, this is the sixth week, so we've covered a lot of territory in the previous five weeks. If you're just now joining us, uh, this week will stand on its own for the most part, but you may want to go back and hear the previous five weeks to kind of get caught up and, and lay a good solid foundation for the things we're saying this week. I want to go back over to some scripture we looked at toward the end of last week, Hebrews chapter 4 once again, Hebrews chapter 4, because some of the things we're finding out about grace, now we simply define grace as unmerited, under, undeserved, unearned favor from God to us. Now that's the simple definition, but of course you have to find out what grace did and what grace reveals to us. First of all, grace reveals to us the heart of God. Because God is love, unconditional love toward us, He has grace and He issues abundant grace towards us in His Son, Jesus. But we also found out that grace has done something for us that we could not do for ourselves. Grace is simply God doing something that we couldn't earn, deserve, or muster up the energy and our own plans to accomplish this on our own. And that's, of course, related to salvation and our redemption. Uh, everything of our life, actually, we receive from God is through the avenue of His grace. But we also found out that grace is an, the great exchange. In other words, Jesus becoming what we were in sin so that we could become what He is now, which is right standing or righteousness with God in, in God's favor. Now, God, Jesus did not commit sin in order to become sin. He just simply identified with us by His grace so that we can now identify with Him in His resurrected state and in His righteousness through our faith. Again, everything that God gives us and everything that God has done by His grace has to be received and enforced in our life today through our faith. Our faith is a response to what God has done and given to us by His grace. Now, grace is such an important thing. I, it, it just... I think we could spend half a year talking about grace and what it's done for us, but we, we do want to hit some of the highlights and some of the things, give us a good working knowledge so that your eyes begin to see some of the things that God has done for us in Christ. And if we're not really looking through the eyes of grace, which is the way God sees us, then we're really not going to recognize we're not going to see, we're cer certainly not going to accept everything that God has done for us, made available for us, and provided for us already in the finished work of Jesus. And that's the other thing that we've been talking about the last week or so, is that grace reveals the finished work of Jesus in salvation, in redemption. And this is really what Hebrews chapter 4 is referring to right here. Hebrews chapter 4, we're going to read verse 1 and 2 again. Verse 1 and 2 in its entirety reads, Therefore, since a promise remains of entering God's rest, let us fear lest any of you seem to come short of it. For indeed the gospel was preached to us as well as to them, but the word which they heard did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in those who heard it. So again, notice right here that the gospel, now we've already uh, found out from other scriptures, Acts chapter 20, verse 24, that, that it's referred to as the gospel of grace. Go the gospel is news that's almost too good to be true. It is true, but it is, is so good, it's so purely good and gracious uh, from God, it, it's almost too hard to accept. You, again, you have to look through the eyes of God, which is, which is the eyes of grace, in order to see the full ramifications of what God did for us and hear this message of the gospel. Now again, this gospel message, the gospel of grace, contains the promise of entering God's rest. Now again, what, what are we talking about when we're talking about entering God's rest? Well, he's uh, like we've already pointed out that 
the grace of God, the gospel of God, the rest of God is all referring to and, and is likened to the original creation when in God created everything in six days and he entered into a Sabbath, seventh day rest. Not because he was tired, not because he was worn out, but because uh, the work was completed or finished. There was nothing left to be done. There was nothing left for man to be done, for God to do. It was a perfect, completed work of creation. And he's using this in as an illustration of redemption or salvation here in Hebrews. And he's telling us that this is also a type of entering his rest by believing the gospel of, of God's salvation through Christ. Why? Because there's nothing left for us to do. It is a finished, completed work. God did it in Christ without our help, without our involvement, and He finished it. We need to understand that right there. Because when you are actually believing the gospel, the grace of God, you cease from your works and you enter into a rest, a perpetual rest, knowing that our salvation is complete and perfect. There's nothing left for us to do to complete this finished work. And I tell you, that is, again, this whole mindset of grace is really kind of going against the grain of the way we've all been taught. The world teaches us, you know, that you, you, you do good, you get good, you do bad, you get bad, and you have to work and, and, and toil and sweat in order to provide for yourself and all these things. And that kind of carries over to our relationship with God many times. And, you know, we, we quote a, a, a quote. It's not, in the, it's not a verse in the Bible that says God helps those who help themselves. Well, God helped us when we couldn't help ourselves. That is grace right there. And that's what we need to understand. That's why we have to spend time talking about this, learning the ways of grace, learning the ways of this rest that we're talking about, because it really so, so goes against our way of thinking this ingrained in us from childhood. And, and that doesn't mean that, that we just quit life, that we retire, that we quit our nine to five job. We become a couch potato and become very inactive. That's not what he's talking about when he's talking about rest. He's talking about something internally more than externally. And we're going to see as we go through this this week, then you can be very active on the outside. You can be working it actually hard on the outside and yet be at rest on the inside. Be walking free from stress and strife in our life. And that is the ways of God. That is the ways of rest. That is the ways of grace that we need to learn right here. Now, again, regarding salvation, religion, man-made, man-altered religion, has mixed a lot of man-made works, rules, regulations, and even man-made law in with the work of God, the work of grace in salvation. And it's really complicated things. Even what we call Christian religion has become very complicated many times because of man-altered, man-made rules and regulations and conditions that man have put on receiving from God, approaching God, relating to God, fellowshipping with God, receiving from God that God never intended. It's not in the New Testament. And so again, we kind of have to distinguish and divide out what man has put in the Christian religion from what's involved in really, really what, what the Christian relationship with God is all about. And that's why we're teaching on these things right here. If you want a life free of stress and strife, you stay with us and you learn the ways of rest, the ways of grace. Again, that doesn't mean you quit your career, stay at home, be a couch potato, retire from life, be inactive. What it does mean, though, you cease from your own works of striving and trying to become and trying to make yourself, trying to provide yourself, really trying to be God in our own life, trying to earn God's acceptance, trying to earn God's favor and blessing. That all goes by the wayside. We get that burden off of our shoulder and we put it squarely on someone who can and did handle it. It, and that's the Lord Jesus Christ in his finished work. Now go on down to verse number 10. He says, For he who has entered God's rest has himself also ceased from his works as God did from his. Now why would we cease from our works? Because regarding salvation, regarding provision, regarding life, 
we are ceasing from our own striving. Why? Because God has already done this. God ceased from His works because it was a finished, completed, perfect work. Listen, there's nothing you can do to complete or add to this perfect work of salvation, redemption, and all that it brings to our life, including provision in our life of everything. You can't add anything to this. It's already a perfect work. You just receive it by faith. And then go on down to verse number um, verse number 13. I want to pick it up in verse 13 for a reason. You're going to think, man, we we're just went a different direction. But this is all in context. Here is what he's talking about. Verse 13 says, For there is no creature hidden from God's sight, but all things are naked and open to the eyes of him to whom we must give account. Verse 14 says, Seeing then that we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus the Son of God, let us hold fast our confession. Verse 15, For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses, but was in all points tempted as we are, yet without sin. Now it almost looks like to, to me that he's carrying us a different way when he says that and there's no creature hidden from his sight, but all things are naked and open to the eyes of those to, whom we, uh, to him that we must give an account. You know, that would be reason, if you didn't know the ways of grace, if you didn't see this thing as a finished work of salvation, that forgiveness of all sins has already been, a, it's a done deal. It's already been completed. We're already cleansed. God does not remember our sins. He doesn't look at us as a sinner. Then you would kind of look at that verse and fall under self-condemnation right here. Think of, well, God's seeing not just what I'm doing, but all my inner thoughts and my intents and motivations. Yes, He does. <laughs> He definitely sees all those. But thank God we have a representative before God. We have a faithful high priest who has walked in our shoes, so to speak, or our sandals, we can say. He's walked in our place. He was tempted in all points, yet without sin. He was tempted in, in things that we that we were not even... We're, there's, we're, we have temptations in our life and pressures, but Jesus had the burden of salvation and faced more temptation than we'll ever even and think about. He came to the point in the Garden of Gethsemane of su under such pressure that he sweated great drops of blood. What was he doing? He was, he was dealing with the outside pressures, yet he did not cave in to this temptation. Well, we have. Jesus knows our weaknesses. He knows the temptations, the pressures that we face in life. He knows the enemy, the adversary, and how he tempts us and puts pressure on us. He knows how we failed. He knows how we, each one of us have failed. He knows in our own hearts, our intents, our motivations that sometimes aren't pure. But yet, in all these things, notice verse 16. He says, let us therefore come boldly, boldly to the throne of grace. Even knowing that God sees not only the outside, but the inside of our heart. He sees everything. He knows everything about us. He knows the, the thoughts of man. He knows the intents and motivations. Yet he still says, come boldly, confidently to the throne of grace. You know why? Because it is a throne of grace. Because we're not dealing with God outside of Jesus, outside of this finished work. We're not dealing with God based on our performance and what we do, trying to outweigh our, our bad stuff with our good works. Nope. It is a finished work of redemption. This is what God is viewing us through. He's viewing us through the finished work of Jesus and the shed blood of Jesus. It's still a rest. And we still tells us to come boldly to the throne of grace. It's because of Jesus' work. It's because of His blood this, that He shed. It's on the heavenly holy of holies before God that it becomes not a judgment seat, but a throne of grace. And He says, Come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in a time of need. You know, our time of need is not the time we, you know, we fall under self-condemnation and we run away from God. It's the time that we take the finished work of Jesus. We take what God has already done and given to us by His grace, and we come boldly to the throne of grace, confidently to obtain mercy, take a hold of it, lay hold of the mercy that's available to us with a tight grip, and don't let go of it, and find the grace that's available there at the throne of grace because of Jesus 
to help in our time of need. I tell you, that's awesome right there. You know, really, if we, the grace message, what we call the grace message or the revelation of God's grace, and it includes everything that we're talking about here, it really does away with hypocrisy. See, hypocrisy would try to cover over for these things and make excuses and, and try to compare with one another and say, well, I'm pretty good because I'm as good as anybody else. There's such hypocrisy that is being bred in a legalistic environment of man-made religion, man-altered religion. But the grace of God allows us to be honest and say, you know what? My thoughts aren't pure all the time. I, I've not done everything right. I've failed. I've come short of the glory of God in my own actions. Oh, but thank God that Jesus, I don't see myself apart or separated from Jesus. I see myself in Christ. And in Christ, God has done a perfect work. God has given me grace, grace, and grace upon us. Again, that doesn't give us an excuse to be irresponsible, lazy, or do bad things. But it does does give, give us an empowerment to come before God to find some strength and enablement and empowerment in our time in a time of pressure and temptation I could keep going but we are going to pick up this again tomorrow I think we got to a good stopping place ran over but if you'd like additional resources and materials go to TonyCowan.org and we'll see you tomorrow <laughs>